problem we face, I would argue, is that there is a lack of knowledge for what computational thinking is. Is it programming? Coding? Is it scratch? Does it have anything to do with engineering? What is it? This lesson will explore computational thinking, and by the end, you should be able to explain it in detail to somebody else who is also wondering what it is. As discussed in previous lessons, learning happens when we activate the prior knowledge of the learner. So here, we are going to discuss how computational thinking is similar to other things that we are familiar with as teachers. First, let's start with a definition of computational thinking. Then we'll delve into other similar ideas. Computational thinking is a method of problem solving that emphasizes the use of technology to aid humankind in solving our problems. Now that we have that definition, let's look at some other problem solving methods we are familiar with to help us grasp computational thinking better. Let's look at the scientific method. The purpose of the scientific method is to help scientists solve scientific problems in a methodical way to explain the world around them. There are six steps. Ask a question. Conduct research. Propose a hypothesis. Design and perform an experiment to test your hypothesis. Analyze what the data means. Form a conclusion as to whether to accept or reject your hypothesis. This is a method of problem solving that was designed to emphasize scientific discovery and understanding the world around us. So, scientific problems can be solved specifically by using the scientific method. Now, let's look at the engineering and design process. The purpose of the engineering and design process is to help engineers solve problems that are unique to engineering. There are five steps. Ask, imagine, plan, create, and improve. This method is different from the scientific method because engineering problems are different than scientific problems. Therefore, we have a different process for a different type of problem solving. So, in short, engineering problems are solved by using the engineering and design process. These methods of problem solving are different because they have a different end goal. One is to solve scientific problems, and the other is to design solutions to engineering problems. Like these, we will spend some time demonstrating how computational thinking is another method for solving problems. The cool thing about computational thinking is that it carries over into all subjects and different methods of problem solving. This is because technology can be used to help us solve problems in all fields and all school subjects. Like the other methods, computational thinking contains some steps. Decomposition, pattern recognition, abstraction, algorithms and automation, and analysis. We'll talk about these steps in greater depth later in the course. However, the types of problems that this method is designed to solve are on the rise because computers are becoming more and more integral to helping us solve problems. By helping our students learn the principles of computational thinking, we will be helping them develop much needed 21st century skills. 21st century skills are a set of buzzwords gaining more popularity in our world. These refer to skills that students today need, like creating, collaborating, communicating, critical thinking, and problem solving. These skills have always been important for students, though they are particularly important in our information-based economy. When most workers held jobs in industry, the key skills were knowing a trade, following directions, getting along with others, working hard, and being professional, efficient, prompt, honest, and fair. Schools have done an excellent job at teaching these skills, and students still need them today. To hold information jobs, though, students also need to think deeply about issues, solve problems creatively, work in teams, communicate clearly in many media, learn ever-changing technologies, and deal with a flood of information. Computational thinking is a method where students can develop these 21st century skills by approaching creation, collaboration, critical thinking, and problem solving with the aid of technology. It seems fitting that we solve 21st century problems using 21st century technology. The goal of teaching computational thinking is not to have every child grow up to be a computer programmer. The goal is to allow them to use their understanding of a computer's capabilities and their ingenuity in applying it to real-world problems in brand new ways. Computational thinkers begin to understand the types of tasks computers are infinitely better at performing than they are, versus tasks that require human creativity. 
This approach inherently contains the needed 21st century skills, and by using it, students are also learning how computers and technology can be a medium to achieve these skills. Let's apply computational thinking using a real-world example. A farmer, who only possesses 21st century skills, no computational abilities, can be an expert of his crop. Let's say lettuce, in this information age. He has the 21st century skills. He is a problem solver, critical thinker, and creator. He has learned how far apart to space the lettuce to achieve the greatest yield. He knows how to individually treat each head of lettuce, killing weeds, and providing fertilizer to make his product the best. He can look at the lettuce, determine the need, and apply one of the dozens of treatments he has created to solve his problem. But because he has no computational thinking skills, he has to personally apply each treatment across acres and acres of farmland. His lettuce is the best, but because it is so time-intensive to care for, he cannot expand his crop and maintain the same high quality. Had he gained his 21st century skills using a computational thinking approach, he would have known that computers and algorithms with cameras attached to a tractor can be used to assess the individual needs of his crop and provide a unique treatment for each head of lettuce at the speed of 1.5 million heads of lettuce every hour. A farmer who knows this is not a computer programmer, but because he understands computational thinking, he can go about solving his problems with the seemingly limitless power of technology in his arsenal. Think about the farmer in our example. He benefited from integrating computational thinking in his field of expertise, which happened to also be his field of lettuce. If we integrate this into our field, we will also benefit from it. And with the nature of our work, when we benefit from something, our students will benefit from it. Computational thinking is not another subject that we have to teach. Yes, there will be a learning curve. However, once we do learn it, the next time we unpack the course standards to integrate some subjects with others, we can include computational thinking in that integration.